Hey everybody, this is going to be our first lesson in chapter 4. So chapter 4 is on systems of equations. Systems of equations are two or more related equations, and they're related because they involve the same information of some sort, or they're in the same scenario. Um, so in this video, we were going to review graphing, solve by graphing, which should be review, and then look at a word problem. That's our plan here. So when you solve a system by graphing, you just graph the two lines and see where they cross. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to graph this line right here in yellow. This is in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is this one, where your slope, in this case, is negative 2 thirds, and your y-intercept is 5. So I'm going to start at 5 and go down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3. I can try to go up 2, left 3, but I can't fit that on precisely super well. So this graph is going to go like that. Okay, so that is the line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5. Please label the lines as you graph them. The other line I'll do in pink. Pink's like my favorite color at this exact moment. This is in standard form. Now standard form is ax plus by equals c. Right now my a value is 2, my b value is negative 4, and my c value is 8. To find the x-intercept, I do c divided by a, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4, right here. To find the y-intercept, I do um, c divided by b, which is 8, divided by negative 4, which is negative 2. It's down here. If I want to find the slope, that's negative a over b, which is negative 2 over negative 4, which is a positive half. So I'm going up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2. I put down dots that go across the whole entire plane. You should do the same. These two lines are crossing at 6, 1. Okay, So this point of intersection right here, which I'll pick with a different color, this is the point 6, 1. Now that is the point that is going to solve my system. That means that is the one point that works in both equations. Okay, That's what you're looking for, the one point that works in both equations. So my solution is going to say uh, x comma y is in one. That is how you should be writing your solutions. Now notice a few things that I did. When I graphed the lines, I labeled some points on each line. I clearly labeled the point of intersection. I labeled the line itself, I used a straight edge, I had a graph with labels on the scales. All those things matter, all those things are important. I'm going to grab this and pull it out of the way over here. Now I'm also going to check. Okay, I'm going to take the point 6 for x. Equal 8, there's a check. Y value was 1. So I'm not showing this very well. I should slow down and show it well. But basically what I'm doing... that I have is 2, negative 1, and the slope of this equation is a half. So I'm going to go to the point 2, negative 1, and from there do a slope of up 1, right 2, or down 1, left 2. This is a slope of positive 1 half. So this is me graphing the line y plus 1 equals 1 half. Ooh, that's a bad line. y plus 1 equals 1 half. Y 
is 0, negative 2, and that's a good line. Okay, let's do this one in this bright green color. Find the x-intercept, that's going to be a nice pretty whole number. The x-intercept is here. Oh, I actually just found the solution, that's nice. But w watch what happens when I graph the rest of this line. The y-intercept is going to be 16 divided by negative 5, and that is not a good point for me to graph. Like, that's 3.2, I think. Yeah. But I don't want to try to, like, ballpark and estimate where around here 3.2 is. So instead, I'm still going to find the slope. Slope is negative a over b. So that's negative 4 over negative 5, which is just 4 fifths. Because I know this slope, from this point, I can just do a slope of 4 fifths. 5. And it's going to look... I'll draw this one just freehand. It's going to look like this. So this is the line... 4x minus 5y equals 16. Okay, now the solution to this line, to the system right here, was the point 4, 0. So let me show a check very well this time. I didn't check well last time. Let me do it this time. When you do your check, pick an equation, plug in the point 4, 0, for x, the point 4 for x, and the 0 for y, and you should get that 16 equals 16, which it does. And I'm going to check the other equation, make sure it works in both. So I have y plus 1 equals 1 half times x minus 2, but my y value is 0, so this is plugging in for y. My y value is 0, and my x value is 4, this is plugging in for x. So it becomes 1 equals a half times 2, which is 1, so that also checks. Sweet. This is my solution. Okay, this will be my last example of just graphing, then we'll do one word problem, and we'll be done. Now, notice this is in slope-intercept form. Be, be a little bit clever here. Recognize... They're going to be parallel or they're going to be the same line twice. Those are the two options here. We've got to figure which one it is. Well, 2x plus 3 graph... Switch the sign. This is my y-coordinate, but I switched the sign. The point 5, 1 is here. So these two lines are clearly parallel. That means these have no solutions. Parallel lines have no solutions. The same line twice is infinite solutions. Okay, So parallel lines, no solutions. The same line twice, infinite solutions. And, I mean, yeah, sure, I suppose I should be doing this and doing this and doing my labels and stuff. So this is why... to solve future ones that get more complicated, okay? So stick with this one. Understand why this sets up the way that it does. How long until you have the same amount of money? And how much money is that? So there are two things we're trying to find. And if you remember from our last word problem unit, whenever you have these word problems, you define variables first. There's two things we're trying to find. X is going to be time, and that is going to be in weeks. And Y is going to be money, and that is going to be in dollars, as opposed to, like, you know, rubles or yen or something. I need an equation for each person. There's the equation for you and me, and there's going to be the equation for our brother. Now, for you and me, our money, Y, 
is equal to $10 we get per week times the number of weeks plus our initial starting amount of $60. This is our starting spot. This is our change. Okay. The slope is the rate of change. The rate of change is your slope. So we're starting at 60 and we're gaining 10. Our brother, his money, well, he is starting at 120, but he's losing 5. So this is negative. He's losing $5, so he has a negative slope, but he started at 120. We are going to graph these two equations and see where they cross. And to graph them, um, I want to have a nice scale counting by uh, my, my money should go by tens, right? So 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. If the money counts by tens, I can fit it on there really well. If the um, weeks counts by ones, I think that'll be sufficient. Let's see. Probably have the weeks count by halves based on how close these are going to be, but we'll count by ones. This guy is starting at 60, and then his slope is 10 over 1. Remember, each step here was 10, right? Like each step was up by 10. So if I go here, this is me going up 10, right 1. Right? This is me going up 10, right 1. So this is actually going to have this diagonal 45 degree angle. It looks like the slope is 1. But it's not because we're going up 10, right 1. And why I'm at it, I should, you know, draw the x and y axis here. There's the y axis. There's the x axis. I'll label those in a second. Now let's do our friend's equation, our brother's equation. He's starting at 120, but he's losing $5 a week. Well, losing $5 every one week is the same as losing $10 every two weeks. And I like to have the number 10 because this is still counting by 10s over here. So I'm going to go down 10, right 2, down 10, right 2. His equation looks like, or his graph looks like this. We intersected at the point 4, comma, 100. So that means in four weeks, we both have $100. Because x is weeks, time, and y is money. So x is weeks, y is money, four weeks, hundred dollars. A couple things to notice. I'm assuming we're not going back in time, and I'm assuming we can't have negative money. That is why I had everything graphed in quadrant one. I put the x and y axis in the bottom left corner. I'm also not going to worry about where this hits zero or the fact that this keeps going up forever. What I'm really concerned with is just finding this point right here, that point of intersection. I should check to make sure that works. If I plug in a 4 for x, this becomes 100. If I plug in a 4 for x, this becomes 100. In four weeks, we have the same amount of money. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll do some solving by substitution next time, and we'll get to some more complicated word problems. It'll be great. See you then.